This is, this is an interesting question that I've been thinking about across the last um, few days at the summer school, um, partly because we have, as the teachers, been trying to situate ourselves for benefit of the students. And I realized that in some ways the answer to your question is uh, a matter of um, looking forward as well as looking back because I feel um, more responsibility to answer the question for the sake of students who are coming, um, for example, to this summer school looking for instruction in affect studies or affect theory. And interestingly, I think um, Lisa Blackman was saying that she prefers to use the term affect studies rather than affect theory, which I hadn't heard that distinction in quite that way before, but I thought it was um, useful because it uh, suggests something that's less hegemonic. Um, same with uh, materialisms and new materialisms. And again, I'm finding it's funny because you see the impact of the theory in the way that it is taken up by students saying, I want to study um, affect theory. I want to study new materialisms. Interesting that those two come together so frequently. So it feels to me as a good teacher, it's not possible to refuse the question and to say, no, we will have no <laughs> school of um, affect studies or new materialism. Uh, so I've had to think about how I would answer your question. And what comes up for me a lot is to go back to my earliest years as a student and to remember my training even before I had a lot of um, the theoretical resources that are now at my disposal and before we were using anything called affect theory or affect studies, that really my training comes fundamentally out of um, an effort to think uh, about culture and politics together, which of course is in the title of the um, center and the summer school, um, and to do so using what were then the available tools of um, Marxism and psychoanalysis, and then um, post-structuralism, but especially Foucault, standing at the crossroads of how to think intimacy, how to think sexuality, how to think um, the relation between the psychic and the social, which is the way that when I was a graduate student in the 80s, we often um, formulated the challenge for us of bringing together these bodies of theory. I think that is at the heart of my training is also multiple lineages, um, certainly ones that are compatible with one another, you know, Marx and Freud, the great you know, Jewish godfathers of the 19th century. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> perhaps like, you know, uncles who don't always disagree <laughs> or something. But, um, but trying, to, trying to bring them together and doing so in a potentially unfaithful way, whether from feminism, from queer studies, uh, from post-structuralism. So being, learning a kind of flexibility um, as against uh, singular orthodoxy. So that was what really um, left its mark, and I'm happy to say that I see affect studies as really coming out of that early set of questions, and it's because of that that I see my lineages as multiple and you know, not even We've talked about, you know, are you of the Delizian school or the Sedgwick Tompkins school? And I think I even refuse that kind of a dichotomy. I see the influence as multiple. I appreciate that in your formulation of the question you have referenced back to this very, very early work of mine on mixed feelings, um, which I also understood to be another way of saying ambivalence. So I think from the outset 
that question of uh, feelings as always carrying multiple valences has definitely uh, informed my response to the more contemporary interest in, for example, negative affect, right? Um, that's sometimes the way in which the current affective turn gets formulated, is that it's a set of tools that have allowed us to look specifically at negative affects um, in, in order to see some positive resource in them. Then sometimes that's received a kind of pushback, like too much negative affect, let's focus on utopia, celebration, joy, happiness, to which I'm always saying, no, it was never one or the other. It's always been both together. In some ways, again, this is a very old problematic of dialectics of hope and despair um, that have been present for a very long time. But for me, they're very alive. That is, it's never an old discussion because it is always a question of seeing um, how those um, ambivalences, mixed feelings, um, play themselves out in any given context. Um, I think the other thing I would underscore that is perhaps a contribution that um, my generation of feminist or queer scholars has made is the turn um, to ordinary affects, flat affects, everyday affects, because I think even in my earlier work, for example, the um, the emphasis on excessive affect in the focus on uh, feminine genres like melodrama and sentimentality, um, as important as that work was, I think it led to um, a more nuanced or a next generation of work that would focus on microdynamics, everyday affects, which required a broader vocabulary, both conceptually and descriptively on, on the ground to be able to get the full range of lived experience as a form of access also onto larger political questions. Hmm. Uh, well, those are two separate questions. How do I work with the material and how do I write about it? Um, and in fact, um, the, I'm in the process of doing the work and it will be interesting to see what the writing is that can fully reflect the complexity of that process. Um, I think it's an experiment. You know, I do see my research practice as always an experiment that is um, definitely theoretically driven. So I think that's one of the ways in which I do help to organize the work is that I'm clear about the questions and often the question is one that has a tension at the heart of it. So one of the ways I explained my archives project was uh, operating in the tension between the anti-archive and the counter-archive and then using that to propel the work on the ground and you know getting messy with it. Um, and so I have been interested to uh, to work with the hmm, a range, as you say, a range of objects, um, a range of collections, um, and to see where that takes me, to really follow the lead of the, the different materials. And to, to, I think I've been thinking about it also as not just about a result, but a method that might be useful for others. So watching myself at work becomes, some, becomes part of the work that I can report on. Uh, and so it might be that I'm not going to be able to um, ultimately write about everything that I have researched, but I hope it will serve as a, a model or a provocation to enable others to work with their range of objects. Mm -hmm.